ninth generation of Pokémon has been a roller coaster ride, to say the least. With the introduction of a fully open world and non-linear objectives, Pokémon Scarlet and Violet finally made the freedom of the monster-filled adventures I dreamed of as a child a playable reality. But that reality was a technical disaster, turning what should have been a standing ovation for the series into a smattering of lukewarm golf claps. Multiple post-launch updates and its first DLC did nothing to fix this, and the Teal Mask expansion specifically was all around a disappointment of its own. So here we are, the Indigo Disc, the last DLC and presumably the final word on Pokémon's ambitious and chaotic ninth generation. Is it an improvement? Yes! but not entirely. While the new area, battles, quests, and challenges are an excellent coda, they're all still bogged down by the numerous problems that have become synonymous with Pokémon's first true foray into the open world. The Indigo Disc takes place at Blueberry Academy, a human-made island off the coast of Pokémon Black and White's Unova region, where your character becomes an exchange student. It continues the story of siblings Kirin and Carmine that started in the Teal Mask DLC earlier this year, with the Teal Mask and the Indigo Disc serving as two halves of a whole story, the hidden treasure of Area Zero. I won't spoil more, but I came away with mixed feelings on the Indigo Disc's campaign, especially in light of how excellent Scarlet and Violet's base story was. Returning anti-hero Kirin's plot especially felt awkward and contrived, and the whole story being split between the two DLC halves in two disparate locations with almost entirely separate casts of supporting characters didn't help. It was strange, too, that the titular hidden treasure of Area Zero was tacked on to the end of Indigo Disc's campaign, like someone realized last minute what the title was and scrambled to make it work. But despite being wrapped in a flimsy story, the Indigo Disc is a pretty darn fun DLC. Its campaign is at its best when it once again turns you loose upon the open world, letting you defeat a series of interesting and diverse opponents in any order you please. This is the freedom that I loved in Scarlet and Violet, and which was mysteriously missing in the Teal Mask. What's more, the Indigo Disc is challenging in a good way. Most of the battles in the DLC are double battles, and your opponent's teams are strategically composed, often packing competitive trappings like held items, complementary movesets, and interesting terra types. There's even one required set of battles that forces you to train up a new team of Pokémon specifically caught in the DLC. Seasoned Pokémon players likely still won't have a problem in the Indigo Disc, but if you're trying to roll through with a haphazard collection of fellas that got you through the main story, you might need to rethink your plans. Most of my time in the Indigo Disc was spent in the Terrarium, a massive, self-contained safari zone of sorts divided into four different biomes, all stuffed with new to Scarlet and Violet Pokémon. After being fairly lukewarm on Scarlet and Violet's world design, I actually thought the terrarium was a marked improvement. It has more diverse landmarks condensed into a smaller space, which makes it a lot more interesting to explore. Instead of finding the same Pokémon all over each zone, many of them are localized to very specific areas, like this deep cave full of lightning-charged stones and electric spiders. I loved stumbling across all these little pockets of Pokémon, and I'm still finding surprising new corners of the terrarium as I work to complete my Blueberry Pokédex. It does help to be rewarded for that exploration, and most of those rewards appear after you finish the Indigo Disc's story via a new feature called Blueberry Quests, or BBQs. These are short, simple tasks that you can complete in the terrarium, such as catch a Pokémon, or photograph a Pokémon in the polar biome. In return, you'll get Blueberry Points, or BP, which can then be spent on all kinds of prizes. Some of these are cosmetic, such as the ability to change up how your character throws a Pokéball or to decorate a club room in Blueberry Academy. But the most interesting and expensive options unlock even more new Pokémon for the Terrarium or let you invite powerful trainers such as Scarlet and Violet's gym leaders to Blueberry Academy for rematches and, delightfully, new story conversations. There are tons of interesting things to spend BP on, including a bonus final boss battle, enough to keep me busy for quite a while to come, even after more than 15 hours in this DLC. that is because gathering BP by yourself is pretty slow, but the Indigo Disc eases that pain by finally, finally giving a purpose to Scarlet and Violet's co-op feature. You've always been able to adventure through Paldea with up to four players simultaneously, but there wasn't really any advantage to doing so 
outside of cooperative sandwich making. But in the terrarium, all players can contribute to and receive BP from one another's BBQs, and even unlock special group quests for bigger payouts. I had a great time running around the terrarium with a friend, strategizing over voice chat about how we divvy up some of the harder BBQs, like completing a raid or making a specific sandwich. I never thought I'd be able to heartily recommend Scarlet and Violet's co-op after my original review, but here we are. I loved almost everything about the Indigo Disc, as a DLC, at least. Its biggest problem stems directly from the fact that it is still an add-on for a game that was fundamentally pretty messy to begin with, and that messiness hasn't gone away. Yep, I'm talking about technical issues again. In fact, how about we let a section from my original review of Scarlet and Violet in November of last year sum up the experience of playing the Indigo Disc? The frame rate is an inconsistent mess. Lighting effects toggle on and off seemingly at random. Models pop in and out at short distances. Characters who aren't that far away walk like a bad stop-motion animated cartoon. Everything slows to a crawl when there's more than one environmental effect on screen at a time. And if that's not enough, here's a section from my review of the Teal Mask DLC earlier this year about the problems with raiding. Queuing into online raids is still inconsistent due to the very weird way in which Scarlet and Violet refreshes its available raids and doesn't notify you when they're full. And once you do get in, completing high-level raids can be challenging due to lag and a weird timer system, sometimes skipping your turn, freezing your screen, or otherwise making it impossible to tell what's going on at any given moment. Somehow, literally all of that is still true in the Indigo Disc. There's a big chunk of the savanna biome in the terrarium with mud puddles that inexplicably causes heinous stuttering whenever you get too close. Multiple times, my game froze for several whole seconds and made me think it was about to crash. The newly added ability to fly around freely anywhere you want does an exemplary job of showing off how haphazardly taped together everything is as entire landmarks flash wildly in and out of existence. And as before, co-op mode or online play makes everything run eh, about 10% worse. I have tried time and time again to ignore all of these issues while playing and just enjoy Pokemon, but every single time, some stupid, obvious bug yanks me out of it, like my Tinkaton completely wrecking in-battle camera angles or the brightness randomly turning all the way up when I'm just trying to make a sandwich. It's inexcusable. Once again, a series I have loved my entire life is giving me extremely conflicted feelings. As a DLC, the Indigo Disc is pretty great. The story's a bit weak, but all the activities surrounding it are a blast, including the challenging battles, the new terrarium zone, the BBQ system and its rewards, and all the benefits of playing cooperatively with friends. I would consider this an excellent DLC if it wasn't shackled to a game that is still, over a year later, an ugly and broken technical mess. If you've already decided to ignore Scarlet and Violet's jank, you'll probably have a good time with the Indigo Disc. I had a good time too, just, you know, in between deep, exasperated sighs. For more Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, check out our review of the base game and our review of the first DLC, The Teal Mask. And for everything else, stick with IGN.